Is it true that a super destroyer, with a displacement of 17,000 tons and more than 128 missile drogue units, will soon appear in the Chinese Navy? When the parameters of a mysterious paper exploded on the internet, military enthusiasts debated whether it was a paper project or a prototype for the next generation of sea fortresses. The core of the answer may lie in a revolutionary breakthrough in Chinese power technology, the emergence of a new generation of high power gas turbines. Looking at the global navy, 10,000-ton destroyers have become the standard equipment of the big powers competing for the deep blue. The East Asian waters of the big ship race is particularly fierce. 2024 the end of South Korea received the full load displacement of 12,000 tons of the King Jongjo class first ship mixed with the United States and South Korea to carry a total of 88 units of the Patat tube system. Intended to compete for the technological high ground, Japan's Moya Class has been equipped with 128 units of MK-41 Patat system, with a strong cooperative engagement capability, and in March 2025, announced a new generation of Japanese, ASEV, destroyer program. The design displacement is as high as 16,000 tons, maintain 128 Patat tube unit, plans to integrate more advanced anti-missile radar and laser weapons. In the face of this situation, China's absolute main force and service, full load of about 13,000 tons of Type 055 destroyers, with its 112 of the world's largest general-purpose Patat tube unit, excellent dual-band radar and integrated radio frequency system, although living in the forefront of technology, but continue to evolve to cope with the pressure of the surrounding area and to meet the needs of their own ocean-going strategic deepening has been the trend of the general trend, the core bottleneck driving the upgrading of the 10,000-ton ship. The core bottleneck that drives the upgrading of the 10,000-ton ship lies in the heart, the power system for a long time. Looking back at the development of 055 and its predecessor, a single CGT 25M gas turbine with a power of about 26.7 megawatts was the hero of the past. In order to drive the 13,000-ton 055 to reach a high speed of more than 30 knots, the designers were forced to adopt a combined fuel-fired configuration of four cgt 25 m gas turbines. This, four engines and drive, to meet the demand, but seriously crowded the ship space, increasing complexity and constraints on the hull aspect ratio design. Tonnage is slightly smaller, 052D also used two sets of combustion engines, plus two sets of diesel engine combination, power system power density and total power ceiling the domestic large ship tonnage to enhance the design optimization of the hands and feet for a long time. This situation in 2024 ushered in a revolutionary turnaround. Chinese officials announced the successful development and application of the new CGT-30 and CGT-40 series of high-power gas turbines with a rated power of 33.5 MW MW and a thermal efficiency of 39.3%, the CGT-40 series, which is positioned at an even higher level, has an even higher power of 44 MW, with a thermal efficiency of more than 40.5%. Compared with the CGT-25 series, the new combustion turbine not only realizes a leap in absolute power, but also a qualitative leap in energy conversion efficiency. This provides a solid and even revolutionary power foundation for China to develop the next generation of larger tonnage and higher performance destroyers. It is envisioned that the new destroyer will be equipped with four CGT-30Ms, which will have a total output power of 134 megawatts, which will not only be able to easily drive the 17,000-ton ship at a high speed of more than 30 knots, but will also leave ample room for the ship's growing power requirements, such as future high-energy laser weapons, electromagnetic guns, stronger radar arrays and integrated electric propulsion, to be met, leaving plenty of energy redundancy. Look again at the paper that generated so much buzz. The parameters of the new ship it depicts are striking, a waterline length of 184 meters, a width of 22.2 meters, a draft of 7.2 meters, and a projected full load displacement of 15,000 to 17,000 tons. However, its aspect ratio is significantly higher than that of the Japanese SF program, which is 7.6, and the wave resistance and stability of this slender type of ship is doubtful in the complex sea conditions of the distant sea. This reveals the technical limitations of the design. It is likely that the design team relied on the CGT-25 series before the introduction of the CGT-30 Fortis to ensure that the 30-knot speed could still be achieved even after a significant increase in tonnage. And the design team adopted a compromise, lengthening the hull to optimize hydrodynamics at the expense of stability, optimize hydrodynamics at the expense of some stability. Thus, 
The thesis proposal was more of an exploration of the limits of the technology available at the time, and parts of the design may well have been replaced by more rational solutions, as the CGT-30M, CGT-40M matured. The surging, Chinese heart, gives China's next generation of large destroyers unprecedented design freedom. Based on the strong power of CGT-30M, a new ship with a length of about 195 meters, can be optimized to a width of about 24 meters, with a more reasonable aspect ratio of 8.1. Such a design can ensure high speed while significantly improving stability, wave resistance and internal space utilization, and improve the habitability of the crew and the stability of equipment operation. Full load displacement is expected to be stable at around 17,000 tons, slightly exceeding Japan's SF providing a solid platform to accommodate more advanced systems. The increase in tonnage will inevitably bring about a significant increase in firepower delivery capabilities. 55 and 13,000 tons of platform to achieve the world's largest diameter of 112 cold and hot common frame universal patat tube unit, compatibility is very strong. When the platform jumped to 17,000 tons, the increase in the number of drogue units became the focus. It is reasonable to assume between 128 and 144 cells. 128 cells is a robust and highly viable option, on par with the Japanese ASEV, and potentially superior in terms of single pit power and mission flexibility due to the larger cell size of the Chinese VLS. Pursuing 144 cells would achieve impressive firepower density, approaching Cold War Soviet nuclear-powered cruiser levels. However, this would require an extremely sophisticated layout that could significantly reduce crew living space, ammunition storage compartments, power redundancy space, and even loss of pipe access. Therefore, weighing firepower, habitability, sustained operational capability and cost effectiveness, the 128 unit or slightly more option is more pragmatic and balanced. It must be re-emphasized that China's large general-purpose patat tube has the advantage of a big pit, which makes it far superior to the US Japanese MK4157 system in terms of its potential to carry large and new types of munitions. The strategic positioning of the next generation of large destroyers will be clearer. It is not only a super destroyer, but also the ultimate guardian of China's future carrier battle groups and the core command node of ocean-going formations. With its huge tonnage and abundant energy, it can integrate more powerful dual, multi-band radar systems to build a battlefield sensing network with wider coverage, higher precision and stronger anti-jamming. Its advanced cooperative engagement system can integrate carrier-based aircraft, AWACS, other escort ships and shore-based information to realize over the horizon anti-aircraft and anti-missile interceptions, supporting the fleet with a Golden Bell Shield, a large number of vertical hair unit to give its powerful regional air defense, terminal anti-missile, long-range anti-ship, land strike and anti-submarine multi-level three-dimensional firepower, become a real arsenal ship. The huge platform also provides space and energy for the future integration of high-energy, directed energy weapons and electromagnetic railguns, enabling it to deal with hypersonic weapons, drone swarms and other new threats. The Chinese Navy's Redefinition of the tonnage class of its ships is also a testament to the rise of new types of major ships. At the Jakarta Defense Expo 2025, China for the first time will be the foreign trade version of the 052 to explicitly referred to as 6,000-ton frigate. This designation is very meaningful. The self-use version of the 052DL full load displacement has already reached 7,500 tons. This degradation is not a play on words, but a strong hint. The new domestic destroyer tonnage threshold has been significantly increased. When Japan's ASEV and South Korea's King Zhangzhou class outline projected one after another in the Western Pacific charts, China's development of 17,000 tons of super destroyer is not only the technical feasibility of the issue, but also to safeguard the country's maritime rights and interests, to support the urgent need for far sea defense strategy. The seemingly radical and even compromised parameters in the paper are in fact valuable explorations based on realistic conditions on the eve of the power revolution. With the second batch of the 055 being launched and outfitted, the third batch of the 055 is likely to play the role of a successor, incorporating part of the verification of new technologies. And the real sea giant, a collection of surging power, tons of huge body, horrible firepower and cutting-edge systems in one epic making warship, perhaps code-named Type 058, its blueprint has been in the, the blueprint is already clear in the dawn of the power breakthrough. It is no longer just a thesis parameter, but will be the steel backbone of the Chinese Navy toward the deep blue, 
is expected in 2026 to 2030, from the drawing board to the ship platform, and finally cut through the waves, become the sea to guard the sea border pin. When the real, world's first destroyer, appeared in the Blue Sea, it will announce that the development of the Chinese Navy's main ship into a new era.